Hepatitis C has become a very exciting field to be in. After many years, really over a decade, of being on a plateau with the available therapy uh, that consisted of peganoferrin and ribavirin, we now have two novel direct-acting antiviral drugs, protease inhibitors, called Tilaprevir and Deceprevir, in May of 2011, after years of uh, careful and extensive development. And both drugs confer genotype 1 patients with a marked increase in the chance for sustained virologic response or cure of their infections uh, to 70% or even a bit more. This is a huge increase from the sustained response rates of about 40 to 45% that have prevailed in these patients previously. The other key element in this advance is the potential for something we've called response-guided therapy, or RGT for short. And that means the capacity to tr uh, truncate or shorten the duration of therapy to 24 weeks instead of the conventional 48 weeks with peganoferrin and ribavirin in over half the patients by virtue of the rapidity of their response. They do have to meet certain criteria for rapid response with either drug in order to be eligible to shorten therapy. But certainly the idea that uh, many more patients can get away with six months instead of 12 months of treatment, which is latent with unpleasant and sometimes difficult side effects, is another part of this advance. We've also had to learn to deal with the side effects of these new drugs. They are not a free lunch in terms of the side effect profiles. Both of them add to the degree of hemoglobin decline that we've become all too accustomed to with peganiferin and ribavirin alone. Tilaprevir is associated with a certain incidence of rash, a small number of which can be severe enough to lead to cessation of therapy. And that drug also is associated with anorectal symptoms, particularly a puzzling type of uh, discomfort, uh, the etiology of which has not been elucidated, that usually responds to local therapies and is seldom treatment limiting. And both of them can occasionally cause some other uh, GI side effects. Uh, we clearly have a new standard of care from which there is no going back. Uh, we now use triple therapy for the broad spectrum of our patients with hepatitis C, by which I mean treatment naive patients, those who have never been treated before, and various types of treatment experienced patients, ranging from relapsers to people who've had a somewhat of a response for partial responders but never became negative previously to null responders who really are quite interferon unresponsive. And there are different degrees of responsiveness within those populations, but triple therapy is the standard for all of them. Simultaneous with the approval of those two drugs, we are equally excited by the, um, the galloping pace of a variety of development programs centering around several dozen drugs that may attack either the viral protease, the way the two approved drugs do, or other critical enzymes of the virus, like the HCV polymerase enzyme, or another enzyme called the NS5A, which is critical to viral replication. And an astonishing number of studies are appearing that are getting us closer to thinking that we can achieve the cherished goal of interferon-free therapy with direct-acting antiviral combinations with proof of concept that you can indeed accomplish cure with such combinations materializing in the past year. And I think we're going to see an increasing pace of appearance of data that show us which combinations can be used to the best effect to achieve this end. At the same time, we have a glimmering of the notion that quadruple regimens with peganiferin and ribavirin and two direct acting antiviral agents may be very effective regimens for patients who are the least responsive of all our so-called null responders. So just as we're now using triple therapy as the new standard of care, we're going in two other directions in the investigative arena with direct acting anti uh, antiviral combinations without interferon or antiviral combinations with interferon. And some trials include elements of both, so it's getting very interesting. I call the discovery of the uh, impact of the IL-28B polymorphism on response to interferon-based therapy, at least for genotype 1 hep C patients, to be a culminating event toward the end of the evolution of the era of pig interferon and ribavirin therapy. And for reasons we still don't scientifically understand, very small genetic variations at certain loci in the region of the lambda-3 interferon or IL-28B gene are very powerful predictive of response. So much so that toward the end of the peg riba era, many clinicians, including myself, were using this test, which is available commercially, to help decide who to treat.